What's up, guys? Welcome to Marketing Teardown with Andrew and Travis. My name is Andrew. I'm Travis. And uh, we are going to create a marketing strategy for a company that we have never heard about in 30 minutes or less. I've got a timer pulled up for 30 minutes. We're going to hit start in a second. I've got a company pulled up that we have both never seen before. Uh, we don't know anything about this company. And we have a blank Google Doc that we're going to create a marketing strategy in. All right. <laughs> When I hit this button, it's going to be game time. All right. You ready? Yep. All right. And we're on. Okay. So Crossbeam, let's see. Supercharge your partnerships. They help companies yep. find overlapping customers and prospects while keeping the rest of their data private and secure. So the, the first thing that I don't like about this is it's extremely broad. Um, it seems like a fairly new product. Uh, I haven't heard of any of competitors besides like uh, general data enrichment. Uh, so if they want to focus and really dump money into a channel, I would highly suggest uh, putting like your buyer personas industry in here somewhere. It's like helps X companies, helps uh, like industrial manufacturing companies, helps uh, yep. e-commerce, B2C internet companies. Uh, yep. Especially if they're not using any other uh, landing pages when they're dumping money into channels. Yeah, for sure. I'm also, this, this H1 right here, supercharge your partnerships. It's clearly about partnerships, but I don't really know what that means. That's really vague. Yeah, um, yep. yeah I'm not sure what the clear benefit is there, but I like their design. Their design is really nice. This, this custom graphic and this a lot of white space, a lot of margins. Um, yep. The design is pretty solid. <laughs> So, so they're, they're definitely going with like a super, super top of funnel strategy, just trying to eat up all the traffic uh, because it does seem like what they're doing is super broad. So when you hit um, get started, it literally just asks you for an email address without any other information and then just says, uh, give me your email address. And then when you put in your email address, it just says, uh, somebody from our team is going to uh, talk to you shortly. No, no meeting, no information. So I mean, just there, yeah. like having something that's a little bit more concrete uh, would definitely be helpful. Yep, yep, not a lot of context. Unless you know exactly what they're doing and who this company is, you're, you're probably not gonna wanna uh, give them your email address in that case. That's a really good yes. point. Um, all right, so scrolling down the page a little bit, partners work together, the data should too. So we can qualify leads, that makes a lot of sense. Eliminate channel conflict surface new co-selling opportunities um, and prioritize your partners by quantifying and tracking the value they create. Interesting. All right, I'll just pull all of these up and we can dig a little bit more into those. Um, and then we have some, some quotes, some testimonials. I like this. Um, I, by the way, before looking at these, I would really like to see some trust factors right here below the fold. That's such a classic yep. move. And just not yep. having logos until you scroll down. Not everyone's going to see that. Yep, totally. So that's, that's one point for sure. Um, let's see. This sounds pretty good. We've got a scrolling across, Stitch, Clearbit. It's a pretty big name right there. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. I'm still, I'm still not at this point sure exactly what they do, but yep. these are some solid testimonials. So they're... They're doing something right, at least. And, and I'm interested just based on these testimonials for sure. Yeah, I think they need to, um, at least in their copy, go a little bit further down um, the value chain and say like, they're, they're going with a lot of benefits and a couple of features, but I think it's more like, hey, be a partnership hero or hey, uh, this will help your organization uh, qualify leads, but it's not necessarily saying what the end goal of qualifying a lead is, um, which yes. would, which would actually be the uh, the third column in that uh, that uh, row with the value props qualified leads them it's channel uh, channel complex prioritize your prioritize partners your partners yeah so since there's not really anything you can uh, directly compare it to prioritize your partners discover your most valuable partners by qualifying uh, and tracking the value they create even going further than that and maybe even saying the exact outcome like uh, grow, grow your most profitable partners to make your whatever, whatever X number of dollars, uh, seen by testimonial X. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Um, I think that makes a lot of sense. All right. I want to move on since we only got so much time. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep scrolling yep. down. So finally we see a, how it works section. So, uh, it looks like they integrate the sync data from systems you use like Salesforce and HubSpot. All right. Uh, connect with your partners in a private company to company network. Okay. And then we share 
to identify overlaps and leads and customers I see between partners and might have leads and customers. That would make sense. And then it pushes data back into systems. Okay, so I, I, this makes a lot of sense. Um, had to scroll down to, to find this to really get this. But I, I, think I, I think I get the gist here. So. Uh, should we dig into their traffic? Yeah, let's dig into their traffic. And then we I'll wrap this up real quick. Get started, Partnership Hero, get started. All right. So going into their traffic, I'm going to pull up uh, Alexa plugin and see what their Alexa rank is. It's 1.6 million, which is okay. It's not, it's not that great. Only two sites linking in. Um, this is better than starting from scratch and just getting going, but by no means is this ranking solidly, I'd say. So and if I check similar web, we don't have enough data to be able to dig into this. So, yeah, which I was something I would expect. Um, mostly direct brand recognition and then a little bit of search and a little bit of inbound linking. So there's a lot of room here on the content side, on SEO and content marketing. Um, I'd say for sure we could, we could definitely go a lot further here. Okay, let's see. Yep, looks like they have uh, 12 employees total. 12 employees, okay. Yeah. So top level, what runs? I see Google Analytics, I see Given, uh, Hewick, and Full Story. I like that I have Full Story. That's uh, so we're getting deep, deeper kind of like user um, analytics on here, what people are doing on their site. Um, I don't know if they have enough traffic to really justify that, but I'm sure for like onboarding flows and stuff, it's, it's pretty solid. Yeah. Um, so let's see. And then built with, I see they have HubSpot. I actually, I actually suspected that based on the sign up form. When you click get started, it looked like HubSpot Orange. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so HubSpot, Google Analytics, a um, couple widgets in here. They're using a CDN, I like that. Uh, their website's pretty fast. I, you know, it's it's very simple, so not too much to do there. Yeah, um, it looks like their buyer buyer's persona is on. Um, essentially anyone at a uh, $50 million or greater um, company that is uh, strategy business development and uh, head of partnerships or VP of partnerships, SVP of uh, partnerships. Yeah. Yeah. That would make a lot of sense. Um, Which I bet we can, I bet we can uh, pull buyers personas every single time just from uh, people with quotes. Just like, okay, what's yeah. their social proof from like clear bit. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, but the testimonial, who's giving the testimonial? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. Um, cool. So I'm seeing a few other things here, by the way, in terms of widgets. We got tweet buttons. We got LinkedIn sharing, Facebook sharing. That's pretty solid. Um, I like that they layer that on top of the blog. Um, looks like they also have LinkedIn platform API. I'm guessing that's the LinkedIn pixel, which means they're doing LinkedIn advertising of some sort, um, which yep. is immediately what I would recommend for an advertising platform, just based on their B2B and targeting C, C level um, buyers as part of their persona. So do you, do you guys have SpyFu? Um, no, we don't have SpyFu at the moment. Um, I've been using it kind of like the free, this is the free level, but yeah. 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 You want to run them real, through SpyFu real quick? Yeah. Yep. So they have no pay keywords. Uh, they're only ranking four, key, uh, four organic keywords, personalized okay. product, cross beam, cross beam security. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, I feel they definitely should be more on the paid Google Ads side for sure. I think that's, yeah. yeah. In terms of channels and advertising specifically, I mean, Google Ads, LinkedIn, huge. Those are probably their top two for sure. Um, yep. If you're talking advertising channels, um, aside from more niche things, but like the big ones, those are their top two for sure. Um, yep. I'm going to check our timer real quick. All right, we're 10 minutes in. We got another 20. Um, <laughs> how much more can we pack? 30 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, maybe maybe another five of just like digging into their um, yeah, 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 their profiles and everything. And, all right. Oh, um, dude, I bet they got I bet they got so fucked from GDPR. Literally, their whole company is just like a database, a database in a way to like they probably have just like a shit ton of Python scripts inside of a platform. Yeah, <laughs> and then they're they're probably using Clearbit Connect to like their their Clearbit API in order to like match data. You got a good point there. I would not, yeah, I would so be probably freaking out as soon as GDPR was going in. Yep. <laughs> yeah, like how are we going to get this to work? Hopefully Clearbit, uh, whatever Clearbit did to comply, 
that's good enough for them. <laughs> oh, seven people like seven people like them on Facebook. Nice. Um, nice. So, yeah, I would uh, imagine their Facebook um, is a strong channel for them, considering. <laughs> what's, yeah, what's so weird is that that like uh, the Facebook token even still, or the Facebook um, widget still even exists. It, like Facebook is such a useless thing for businesses now. I know, right? Or, or, or at least like. Like like true B two B businesses, not like like small businesses is still great, but um, yeah, yeah. Um, so cool. Use intelligence from partners. All right, I think it's pretty clear sort of what's going on with their price at this point. Um, I think we're looking more at like their growth channels and what they can do with um, their social profiles. It seems like there's not too much going on, on Facebook. Um, not too much going on LinkedIn. 124 followers is solid, but. Um, See. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder how they're trying to grow right now. Like, are they, are they doing trade shows to where they're doing lots of like hand to hand combat where you you have to go and talk to like a CTO head of partnerships. Uh, yeah, you know, I like at the I top bet. of this development. I bet. Yeah, and it looks like so. Their last round was in December 11th. So I, it looks like they just got fresh capital. I'm sure they're probably still formulating their next marketing moves. I yep. bet they're just like just starting to really spend that money um, productively. So interesting. Okay. All right. Well, um, I actually would be down to jump over into the Google Doc and start throwing some things in there. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, I think we've got enough to start building out a little bit of a strategy here. Um, will you will you shoot that over to me uh, in Slack? In Slack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me a sec. Um, here, I'll stop the share real quick, and then I'll. There you go. Uh, by the way, this is literally an untitled document. I need to name it before sharing. <laughs> Cross beam strategy. All right. Um, Sick. Will you update Sharon real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me a sec. Um, sorry. This is this is how fresh this is. This is um. <laughs> it's really is from scratch. I promise you. If we're gonna actually post this, anybody watching, this is truly from scratch. Um, all right. Give that a link to spin. Sick. All right, and then I'll pop. I'll pop back on my um. Screen share. Uh, there we go. All right. Cool. Personas. Um, I can get I can get cracking on channel strategy um, real cool. quick, and then uh, get some about the website as well. Um, so channel strategy. LinkedIn ads. I gotta say off the bat, LinkedIn ads are for sure gonna be strong for them. Um, Google ads as well. I don't know if the keyword volume is there, but if there is, especially in like partnership software or like interest on solving whatever problem that people have, like, you know, bad data, cleaning up data on leads, things like that. I'm sure that Google ads is, is the right move for that. Um, so those are there for sure. Outbound email, uh, I gotta say, outbound email is probably really effective for them. Um, and probably more cost effective than LinkedIn ads and they could probably do run some LinkedIn scrapes to get that same information, same context. Yep. Um, no. conferences, like we said earlier, conference marketing is probably huge at this point. Um, and let's see, yeah, those are my top four for sure. Um, content, actually content marketing, I'd layer on as well, slash SEO, uh, I kind of put those in the same bucket, but if this, the keyword volume is there, um, you know, they're going to want to run Google ads, but these people who are partners and, you know, senior level, C-suite that work with, with data and that work with partnerships, they're going to be searching for things online and content marketing is going to hit them. It's just a matter of what those topics are. So I would imagine that, especially with the recent investment, they would want to invest in content marketing and I would want to do that now sooner than later. Um, actually, I think they had a blog, a link to the, yeah, a link to the bottom, um, see if they've been active. I'll get an update on time. All right, 15 minutes or the 15 minute mark. Um, launch, funding, funding, latest, uh, okay. So it looks like they just got their blog up and running. There's a, oh, literally there are two posts from today and that's it. I, this might've been launched like today. <laughs> that's cool. Well, they're moving. They know, they know it's just valuable. They're moving on it. Um, one thing I'd like to see on the blog, uh, and I'll add this under lead capture with Travis, what you just added as well, is um, option to subscribe to the blog. 
yep. in the sidebar. Um, I, yep. I would have subscribed just now as we're doing research and there's nothing here, there's nothing there. Um, even if I want to from the blog page, there's, there's nothing. So um, yeah, on the, on the blog, this blog article as well, there's nothing. Yep, yep. Yeah, they've got they've got to try it now. Get started, call to action, but it's it's too bottom of the funnel of a call to action for blog content. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know anything about this company at this point, so right. they need to do a better job walking them down the buyer's journey. Um, I would definitely would definitely want to see that. So, more direct. Um, top of funnel CTAs. Uh, Follow, get ebook, etc. On blog, and I see I see they're going in the right the right direction um, with HubSpot too. Clearly, they're into inbound marketing, and honestly, if they just started their blog, but they are using HubSpot, I, I bet they're open to this and they've they've kind of heard of what they can do with content, or if or maybe they just haven't had time to do it yet because they're building out the tech. But I think they're going in the right direction here. It's, it's just a matter of really doubling down on it because. It's, it's not going to happen unless they invest now. So, um, yeah. And, and content's one of those things that, like, I, I tell us to clients all the time, you know, it's going to pay off six months from now, 12 months from now, 18 months from now. But if you put off the decision, I mean, you're never going to rank because, you know, six months from now, if you're starting, it's going to be another six months. So now we're a 12 month time frame, and yeah, you're not going to see an ROI. Uh, yeah, they're kind of they're kind of in an awkward place right now uh, as far as like channel strategy too, because maybe there there's definitely a possibility that they're making their messaging so broad, especially like right above the fold on their landing page of uh, Crossbeam helps companies find overlapping customers and prospects. Like that literally could be anybody. I think yeah. there's a possibility that they're going really broad because they don't have product market fit yet. Um, mm. So possibly like running with Google ads first and running a shit ton of tests to see what messaging is working well and then spending more money on LinkedIn ads saying like, okay, here's the exact market that we want to go after. Um, doing that first, that way they're not just dumping a bunch of money into LinkedIn ads for leads that don't resonate with exactly what they're doing. Yeah. Um, I'm adding some notes by the way under persona for this, um, that, that testing is probably a good idea here. And yep. I, yeah, yep. it's probably LinkedIn ads because it's generally, I mean, they're, they're on to the, the general job title. I mean, it'd be someone in partnerships or, da or data. So yep. honestly, what they really should do is they should, yeah, find an audience of people who have that title. Um, we'll run some campaigns, do a split test of five different value propositions or five different, you know, things that could be the main headline on their homepage. And then we'll see which one performs best. Um, yep. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. Um, you know, one thing that I, I think down the line, by the way, that could happen, uh, Facebook look like audiences. And I think this is a long way out, like maybe a year from now. But if they had an email list of, say, 20,000 or 30,000 um, people who are exactly in their target persona, that might result in something valuable. It's a little yeah. more out there, but I, th I think it might. So, yeah, yeah, totally. Um, so I want to add that in there as well. Um, I'll add retargeting as well into the channel strategy. Um, if, if they're going to be paying or spending effort on getting people to their website, we got to be retargeting for sure. Um, and, and I'd want to see the structure out into a few ways too. Uh, starting with top of funnel campaign, um, educating on the product based on people that say just might have seen a blog post and then a middle of funnel campaign um driving to a demo or a free trial or something like that and then a bottom of funnel campaign driving to purchase after they've had a chance to to taste the product and you know they, they're putting the little um ice cream um like popsicle sticks back in the trash can they've had a taste and they're ready to go <laughs> perfect <laughs> so um i wish you're adding a little bit to outbound email as well yeah, I wish I could see exactly uh, what their platform looks like because they're it's so vague. Okay, also, so when you're looking at data sources, you could use Clearbit to say, uh, to look at all their integrations, right? And so find um, find companies that uh, use HubSpot, use Salesforce, use Microsoft SQL, use Pipedrive, use Stripe, Marketo, MySQL, uh, and then make sure that um, the companies that they're reaching out to first uh, have those uh those uh, products in their tech stack. 
Yeah. You know, yeah. It's more relatable. They say like, oh, actually we have a perfect integration with HubSpot. I can walk you through it in 10 minutes because they already have background on that. Yeah. I, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to piggyback on, on your comment there as well. They have integrations here under the platform. I didn't even see that at first until scrolling down. Like I could have bounced without yeah. even knowing what their integrations are. So I, yep. I, I would even add, you know, under improving the website that we want to get those integrations in the top level navigation. Yeah. Um, yep. Totally. Or at least, at least on uh, their homepage. Yeah. Because yeah. right now there's yeah. nothing that there's nothing that I can identify with. Um, when I'm looking through this, like even if I see like HubSpot or Salesforce, I'm like, oh, this works with HubSpot and Salesforce, just like at a super, super quick, like broad level. Okay, I already know what sandbox I'm playing in. I'm doing partnerships, I'm doing sales, like without reading a single word on the page. Yeah, and you know what, by the way, this, uh, this integrations page, oh my God, this is telling me so much more about the product than anything on their fucking homepage. Like, yeah. okay, now we see the data sources. Here's what we can sync from you from your uh you know your crm or whatever email alerts rest api items into slack from salesforce like now i understand what we're pushing here this is this is the, the good stuff right here so um I, i'd also by the way under um linkedin ads because we have um um audience targeting right and and this would go into facebook as well to a degree but mostly linkedin um i think you could probably cross target um c-suite titles with um integration partners. So like somebody who follows Salesforce, uh, after they launch their Salesforce integration, someone who follows Salesforce and is, you know, a uh, VP of partnerships or SVP of partnerships, yeah, yeah. that's right. your target. Now send them yep. hyper direct messaging about Salesforce. It says, you know, maybe the ad copy is like, do you have trouble, you know, cleaning up your lead data in Salesforce? Click here to find yep. out more. And boom, you've got a really, I'm sure you get a really high click the rate on that message. Yep. Yep. That's super good. So, um, we got about seven minutes left, by the way, making good pace. Um, like where we're going here Put on the website channel strategy. Um, you know, there, there might be something for brand here as well. Um, it's not quite a channel, but I think it's important to bring that up. Their, their design is really good and it's very clean and simple and you can kind of see the messages that they're going with. I think there's an opportunity to really invest in branding to, to get awareness with their target persona here. Um, you know, whatever that looks like with PR or with doing, you know, collaborations with influencers or, or different people. But I, I think there's a branding at play here to be had for sure. Um, so. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, they definitely need simplifying their messaging into, I know they're trying to make things broad that way they're, they're more fluid in like the sales calls that they're having, but really defining the exact value because I, even as I'm looking at it right now, it's really, really difficult for someone else who even would be using this prod product to clearly communicate the value to somebody else who might want to use the product as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I want to, um, to, to that point, you know, one thing that maybe they could focus on is video. Um, and, and it could even be as simple as just walking through the product or like showing a use case of what happens when you use the product correctly. Um, yeah. video is also really cheap. So it's really cost effective if they're trying to, you know, watch their burn rate with all the money they just raised. So uh, video on LinkedIn, uh, would be pretty huge. And I think you could probably, if you get really creative with your targeting, you could run, uh, video ads, um, from Google ad campaign as well, right? Like all of yep. YouTube is your inventory, um, different partner sites, but it'd be tricky to get the targeting right. But I think that's worth checking out. Like there's some potential there. Yeah. Um, these use cases too are kind of, they're very theoretical. So when you're, when you click into like uh, qualify leads, avoid channel conflict, you can tell that like when you're reading this, um, it's completely made up and it's not, uh, it's not real. I think one thing that drip does really well is that they always like, uh, focus on their customers as like people that are people with a face that say exactly what their problem was, uh, who they worked with, how drip used, uh, what features they used, uh, in drip and the, the actual like written outcomes. Yeah, no, you know, you know what it is too. 
it said this is not customer language. This is them taking language that they've created in their heads and saying this is a value proposition. Yeah. But yeah, I bet totally. if you just scroll down um, yep. to some of these quotes, we, we probably get some, some good stuff here. Yep. Throw away your customer mapping spreadsheets. Like, yeah. there we go. That, that's a quote. That's a one-liner. So one, one thing I think they could do that would um, kind of kill two birds with one stone here is they could do customer interviews. Uh, and then what they could do is uh, prioritize their uh, highest revenue, most impacted customers, uh, do an interview with them, turn that into a LinkedIn, uh, uh, a LinkedIn article, and then use the interview uh, with information from that uh, LinkedIn article to create a case study to put on their website and then have case studies uh, scrolling on their uh, homepage. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, I'm, by the way, there's one thing that just jumped out at me here. Uh -huh. Data-driven approach to partnerships from Clearbit. Boom. Like, why isn't that the headline? I don't know if that's yeah. effective, right? We want to test that, but that sounds yeah, yeah. way, way better than supercharging your partnerships. Yeah, yeah, totally. totally. Yeah, and, and like straight from the mouth of a customer. So that, that's, yeah. that's pretty yeah. solid. Um, yeah. Do you have any ideas, by the way? I think we're just rounding down to three minute mark here, but do you have any ideas? Um, I know some of the stuff you've done at Cinebody has been more focused on like the like true growth hacking, like technology side, like how do you build the product in a way that ties in with marketing? Like, cause you guys mess around with SDKs and like integrating with other platforms and stuff. I, I think there could be a play here, but um, I don't have as much expertise. So do you have any ideas on that side? Uh, honestly, like I would have to see who they're working with right now because really like at this point, if they feel like they're going in the right direction with product market fit, the best thing they can be doing is doing customer interviews uh, and then doing releases uh, through those customer interviews saying like, hey, uh, we know uh, Sabrina at Clearbit had this genius idea and that way they make it, it'll, it'll help with churn and it'll help um, them say like, it'll make Clearbit feel like they're a part of the company. We do that a lot. We'll, we'll like hear that. out the customers. Yeah, that's a good point. I like that. You know, all this stuff, by the way, all this, so much of what we're talking about, it just goes back to, they have current customers, like use their language, use, use their story, yeah. use their applications yeah. of the product. Um, yeah. and, and I also, this is giving me an idea though. Um, like look at a company like Zapier, right? Where it's so open, it's an integration company. Like you can connect anything to anything. And if you just tell people, yeah, you can integrate shit together. It's like, I don't know what that means. But the moment you take an example from what you can do with an integration, you've got content. Um, yep. And you can say, you know what? Have you ever wanted to sync leads from Salesforce into HubSpot and then back over into, I don't know, and enrich them with Clearbit and then decide which partnerships are worth pursuing and which ones aren't based on that enriched data or like some whatever. Like yep. I'm just making shit up. Like Dude, that, that's, that's, that's your content. Smart, that's an article. Yeah, I mean, it's even like small shit every day where it's like, hey, I'm going cool to show you some cool shit to do in Salesforce. Like, I'm going to show you one individual, like, it's not even a full feature. Like, here's, here's how to enrich this contact, uh, this contact and get the phone number in 30 seconds. That's an Instagram piece. That's a LinkedIn piece that everybody can share. Uh, and it's really, really easy. It takes fucking absolutely no thought. It's just digging into their product and showing people the wow moments. I'm just like, oh, this is yeah. really fucking cool. Everybody's going to think this is cool and it's going to get people interested and it's a really, really simple way for somebody to explain what the product does. Yeah, exactly. And they, they've got to have some sort of angle that nobody else has, right? I mean, maybe they don't. If they don't, then they got to be watch out. <laughs> they better find that. But they should have it. They should be like, we're the only people that can integrate this thing and have a spot with this thing in Salesforce. Whatever that is, they need to tell people about it because, yeah, maybe they can keep it a secret sauce, but, you know, that's not going to be your competitive advantage forever. And if it is, that's what's valuable. I tell people that's your content. So I think that's pretty, that's pretty solid. Um, so we're down to 22, 20 seconds right now. I want to, I want to close out with some prioritization on next steps here for these guys, like what we would do first. Um, and maybe we can just, we'll go a little over. I'll give like a 30 second. If you want to give a 30 second, um, yeah. My, my next steps, I want to get all these things up there on the website as soon as possible. That's, that's your core. You know, we're going to be driving a lot of people to this website from ads, from content, whatever. All right. All right. Alarm. Um, we're going to be driving a lot of people uh, from, no, sec. let me make sure that it's still sharing. There we go. Yeah. We're going to drive a lot of people from content, from ads, whatever. We got to get all these things with the website up day to day stuff. Like that's our first step. And then next step, let's get some uh, messaging tests going, right? Let's get LinkedIn tests to figure out more about what we're going to do with our messaging. We're going to use direct quotes from customers, um, from customer testimonials and see which ones resonate the most. 
And then after that, we'll run some ads and make some content. And that's, that's next up. LinkedIn ads, outbound email, and content marketing. And I do those things in that order. Yep. Yep, I would agree. Um, yeah, and it, we'll, we'll be driving all, of that, uh, all those ads to landing pages. And then once we get a certain uh, reference of, hey, this is a direction we should go, go and uh, update it on the site. Uh, I think as far as like uh, prioritization of uh, making sure that money goes in a direction that's not just spending a shit ton of money, I would go uh, AdWords for testing first uh, and then uh, increase LinkedIn as you increase LinkedIn ad spend as you learn from AdWords. Uh, mm -hmm. But also um, I think integrations is probably the, uh, the, the like most pinpointed place they can go is like, explaining the integrations and actually having yes. pillars of saying like, Hey, here's a bunch of cool shit you can do with Salesforce and making it not necessarily about, uh, about the company cross beam, but, uh, instead making it about Salesforce and giving people pro tips like, okay, now that you've seen how to do this, like what software do you actually need? You need cross beam. Yeah, no, you love it. I think you're absolutely right. And that's, I think that's the right product mindset to have around marketing, right? If we're doing product marketing and product driven marketing, so cool. Well, all right. That's it. That's it. That's our 30 minute strategy. That's our teardown of Crossbeam. Um, we'll leave you guys with some call to actions. If you want to learn more about me, you can check me out. AndrewShimar.com. It's at AndrewShimar on Instagram. You got, you got some pluggables you want to plug Travis? Yeah. If you've got, if you've got the skills, you can find me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I love it. I love it. Um, that's it, guys. Share this with people if you liked it. Uh, comment on it. Tell us companies that you want us to tear down if you want us to tear down other companies, and we'll probably make some more of these. Peace. Dude, that's great. I love it.